The Ohio Innocence Project at the University of Cincinnati wants a new trial for convicted rapist Dean Gillespie. The Channel 9 I team focused on Gillespie nine years ago, and our stories helped convince the Innocence Project to take his case. Now, one of Ohio's top lawyers is risking his reputation to free Gillespie. The I team's Lori Quinlivan says many people are haunted by Gillespie's conviction. Lori? Clyde and Carol, he was convicted based solely on eyewitness evidence, which experts say is wrong half the time. During his trial, prosecutors offered Gillespie this deal. Say you did it, and we'll give you 30 days in jail. He refused. He's now been locked up 17 years. People haunted by the case include Gillespie's family and friends in the Dayton area, some detectives, reporters like me, and now Ohio's former attorney general. Good to see you again, man. It's been a while. Yes, it has. Inmate Dean Gillespie has never used a cell phone or a computer. Those items weren't around 17 years ago when he was sent to prison. I've lost everything I've ever had. My business, my home, everything. I haven't had the opportunity to have children, get married, nothing. Nothing. I was 20-some years old when this happened. Look at me. There may be something here. But Gillespie has a powerful new ally. Former Ohio Attorney General Jim Petro has joined the team trying to free Gillespie. I think he was arrested under circumstances that other detectives would have said, this guy's not the guy, because he did not match the description given by the victims at the time the crime occurred. It was 1988. A man abducted two women from a store parking lot in Dayton and raped them. Gillespie became a suspect after a disgruntled co-worker told police he looked like this sketch of the rapist. I was a good detective. Miami Township Sergeant Steve Fritz supervised the case. He ruled out Gillespie as the suspect. He didn't match the description and had no criminal record. It bothers me to think that this guy is doing time for something he didn't do. Kids, family, all that stuff's behind him now. I mean, it's, he's not going to have that. And it's not right. After Fritz left the force, a new detective picked up the cold case and put Gillespie in this photo lineup two years after the crime. The rape victims chose Gillespie. Experts say no wonder. Gillespie's photo is larger and on a different color background. If a photo stands out from any of the others in any way, it's more likely to be selected, even if it is wrong. The detective who arrested Gillespie is Scott Moore. This case has uh, haunted me through my career. He just done this. To, this. This was his first case. Get his little career going. We have our rapist. We've always had our rapists. The victims have no doubt about it. And we're not going to change our minds about that. The Innocence Project here at UC is now working Gillespie's case, even though there's no DNA evidence to help prove his innocence. They intend to prove police misconduct by Detective Moore and the real identity of the rapist. Right, I can't remember her name. UC professor Mark Godsey is directing two UC law students on the Innocence Project for Gillespie. My hope is that we get Dean out of prison. That's my hope. How are you? They visit Gillespie in prison and talk to his mother daily. And we've kind of followed them through other cases and we know that they do get innocent people out of prison. And we're just thrilled to have them with us. This case doesn't have DNA, so it's not going to be an open and shut case that maybe some other Innocence Project cases might be. Okay. Thanks to DNA evidence, the Ohio Innocence Project freed Clarence Elkins from prison in December 2005. Jim Petro helped to free Elkins and says he couldn't turn his back on Gillespie. Do you believe Dean Gillespie is innocent? Absolutely. Dean is innocent. I'm absolutely convinced Dean is innocent. This is not speculative on my part, and I'm convinced of it even from some of the lessons in life that I've had as 35 years a lawyer. What was it like when you found out that Jim Petro is joining your case pro bono? It was unbelievable. It's like uh, Christmas every day for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's unbelievable. As soon as he was arrested, Gillespie said, I'm willing to take a polygraph. Yes. The officer refused to give it to him. So often, eyewitness identification is flat out wrong. It just happens to be that way. I encountered it 34 years ago as a prosecutor. And on four occasions, I used polygraph 
and ultimately went along with the, uh, the, the polygraph as I made a decision whether to pursue the case or not. Petro will be going against a former colleague, Montgomery County Prosecutor Matt Heck. There's been nothing new other than these uh, just bold claims that uh, he didn't do it, doesn't want to be in the penitentiary. Now you've got to remember that his case went before the Ohio Parole Board. In March, the parole board heard about Gillespie's community service. He's created artwork for charity and built award-winning sets for the Cincinnati Flower Show. The parole board knew he had hundreds of support letters and a dozen job offers. It didn't matter. The parole board voted seven to zero against paroling him. Why do you think they refused to give you parole? Well, it said right on my parole papers a continuous denial of charges. You know, they want you to go in there and say you've done something that you didn't do. I did not do this. I will never, ever say I did it. The Innocence Project hopes to convince a judge the real rapist is this man. He's a former corrections officer who fits the description of the rapist. He was arrested in 1990 for abducting a woman in Fairfield. The I-team tracked him down in Kentucky. He spoke to me on the phone and firmly denies he's the rapist. I think there's enough issues that we're able to raise that are new issues, new evidentiary issues, that I think there is a very good chance that a court will look at this somewhat sympathetically and say, we're going to give this a, a, a new trial look. What are you going to do when you do get out? I'm going to go home. I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> it might not happen. We tried to get a new interview with Detective Scott Moore for this story, but Miami, Miami Township Police said no. Now the Innocence Project plans to file the motion for a new trial before the end of the year, Clyde. And what about the Dayton prosecutor? What is he saying? Well, he is telling the Innocence Project, come through, look all our, um, come through. Come and look through all our files, and they say they will plan to do that, but they don't expect to find anything because they've learned that some of the key evidence never made it to prosecutors. Mm. Okay, all right. This is one to keep an eye on. We will. All right, Lori, thanks. Sure.